What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension modeling tutorial for you. So in today's video I thought we'd go through and we'd create a building with a roof and then add actual metal panels to the roof with a real profile. So what this gets us is this gets us a more detailed roof in case we're creating a rendering or something like that. And I'm also going to teach you a great method for keeping the size of your file manageable when you do this. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so in this case what we're going to do is we're going to use the extension TIG roof. TIG roof is a great extension if you want to create kind of a simple roof profile. As you start getting more complex you may want to use something else or maybe even model things out manually just because roofs can be a little bit tricky but for what we're doing right here this should work just fine. And so um, I will link to that extension in the notes down below. It is free. But basically what we want to do is we want to use the extension. So if I go to extensions gable ended roof we want to use this to create the roof on our simple structure. And uh, notice there are other kinds of roofs in here. So I will link to a video about TIG roof in the notes down below if you want to learn more about how to use it. But in this case, we just want to select the option for gable ended roof. And then we want to tell it um, the first gable endpoint, the second corner. So that's going to give us our width. And then we're going to click again somewhere in order to give it the length. So now when we click, it's going to bring up an option. What the options function is going to do is it's going to allow us to set either our slope or our height of our roof. In this situation, I'm going to say that this is going to have a slope of, we'll say, 1 to 3. Um, we'll leave our fascia size at 4 inches. So that's going to be the size of the board that goes along the face of the roof. Um, the soffit size, we'll go ahead and bump that up to 12 inches. I like to make this sloping and sloping just because I think it's more realistic. Um, the sloping and horizontal or the vertical and horizontal, what they do... Um, Actually, you know what, we're gonna do vertical and sloping. So horizontal I don't like because it makes a flat area underneath the roof, which we don't really want. We want the soffits to be kind of, uh, we want the soffits to be sloping. And then we'll go ahead, we'll leave these as is, we'll leave these as is, we'll leave these as is. And we're gonna click on okay. And so what that's done, is that created a roof I didn't really like. I'm just gonna run this again. And this time I'm gonna have a taller slope. So we'll go to gable ended. It's going to change my slope to one to three and that's the cool or one to two that's the cool thing about this extension it is allows you to make changes like that really quickly so notice what that does is that adds the face in here it gives you a soffit based on the size that you dictated and it gives you the roof itself um, so what we want to do now is we want to go through and we want to add our metal panels and what i want to do is i want to extrude a metal panel profile along this face and I find the easiest way to get a realistic profile is to go download one. So one of the cool things about SketchUp is you can import CAD files into your program. So let's go ahead and use that functionality. And so what I've done is I've gone to a website called metalsales.us. They have CAD drawings of their different metal panel types. So there are other manufacturers that also make things like this available. For this one, we're going to go ahead and we're going to download the uh, profile for this Pro Panel 2. Um, so I'm just going to go down to the details. I'm actually going to download three files. I'm going to download the base, I'm going to download the gutter, and I'm going to download the ridge because we're going to use all of those. So I'm going to click on base, I'm going to click on gutter, and I'm going to click on ridge. So you can see how those all download as CAD files. So now we need to bring them into SketchUp. And so the nice thing about this is bringing them into SketchUp is really easy. So you can actually just drag them in, or you can do a file import. I'm going to start by importing the base. So I'll double click. That's going to bring this CAD file in. Notice how it places it kind of near the origin of my model. And so I'm going to erase out my default model because this is in the way a little bit. We're just going to take a quick look at this. So when we take a look at this, what this has done is this has basically brought in the details that were in the CAD file for this metal panel. So you can see how it kind of overlaps over itself just like this. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make this a profile in a second. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and bring in those other details while I'm at it. So I'm going to do a file import. We're going to bring in the box gutter. I'm just going to kind of move that out of the way for right now. And then I'm also going to do a file import and we're going to bring in that ridge cap. The ridge cap is going to be important because that's going to show us the, uh, the slope of the cap that goes over the top. So what I want to do now is I just want to move this out of the way as well. And so now 
we need to make sure that these are all in here to scale, right? Like we need to make sure they're to the right scale because right now, if we were to measure this, um, between this point and this point is about two inches. Well, if we go on their website and we look at the actual size of this, you can see how this is supposed to be nine inches between the, the top points right here. So what we need to do is we need to rescale this to the proper scale. So the way that I'm gonna do that, so I'm just gonna double click in here and I'm going to use the tape measure tool. Notice how I'm inside of this group. I'm gonna click, I'm gonna hit the control key to make sure the little plus is not showing because we don't wanna be in create guide mode. And I'm just gonna find the center here and the center here and I'm gonna click. And so that tells me that the length is something like two inches. But if you look down at the bottom, it says enter value to resize. I'm just gonna type in a value of nine and hit the enter key. It's gonna ask me if I wanna resize this active group and I'm gonna say yes. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna resize this group so that my profile here is the proper size. So now if I was to measure this from here to here, it's nine inches. So we know this is sized out properly. And we'll come back and we'll resize these others in a little bit. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this profile right here and I'm going to extrude it, right? So I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna move it, and then I'm gonna extrude it up. Um, and we're gonna be able to extrude that into a metal panel. But we have a problem. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to double click in here, do a control C to copy, and go back outside my group, and I'm gonna do a control V in order to paste. And I'm just gonna align this real quick using the rotate tool. So I'm gonna rotate this this way, then I'll use the rotate tool and rotate it 90 degrees this way so that it's standing up. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this edge as a path in order to extrude this with the follow me tool. However, if we were to do that right now, we're gonna run into a problem which is the amount of geometry this creates. So if I double click in here, you can see how um, with the face, there's a thousand and two entities in here, right? What that means is that means if I extrude this out, and then I triple click on it, you can see how it, the simple act of extruding this item right now gives me 4,000 entities. So what that means is I'm getting tons of little edges and faces in here that you can't even see that you don't need. And so what I wanna do before I extrude this is I want to um, simplify it. And so for that, I'm gonna use another extension. So first of all, I'm gonna create a copy just so I have a backup of this item over here. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to move it over here. And hopefully we never have to use this one again. So now what I want to do is I want to simplify this with an extension called Curvizard. So Curvizard is another Fredo 6 extension that has an option here to simplify contours. So a lot of the times we use this in order to um, simplify like site models that we bring in, but it'll also work in this situation. Because if you look at this, right, like this curve, in here, there's 11 edges on each one of these curves. And what that's doing is this is really running our geometry count up. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click and then I'm gonna run the option for simplify contours. So when I click on this, what that's gonna do, is that's gonna pop up a little tool with some options. And notice how what this is doing is this is using the angle of these items in order to simplify this. So you can see how I have this number in the upper right hand corner. Well, what that means is that means that now if I was to run this, instead of this having a thousand segments in it, it's gonna have 176. And you can adjust this angle if you want. So if you want those curves to have a little bit more detail in them, you can move this down. Just remember that the more you move this angle down, you might be getting a little bit more detail in here, but you're also getting more segments. So for me, I don't really feel like it's really gonna matter all that much if I have super detailed curves on these corners. So I'm just going to set my angle to 14 so that this will simplify this to have 176 segments. So now what I can do so I can hit the enter key in order to finish that application. So now, if you look at this curve, it made this a single curve with 176 segments. And then real quick, you just need to draw over one of the edges in order to get a face in here. Well now, we have a face that we can extrude that still has the same look as our metal panel, but a lot less geometry in there. So now what I wanna do 
is I want to extrude this along this edge. So that's a little bit of a problem because this edge is inside of a group, right? But what we can do is we can double click, click on the edge, then I'm gonna activate the follow me tool. So the follow me tool is gonna let me extrude this along this edge. But since my target path is inside of a group, I need to right click and click on close group before I do this. And then because the tool is still active, I can click on this face. So what this has done is this has extruded this object along that face. And then what I wanna do, notice how if we look at this, this only has 706 entities instead of the 4,000 that we had in here before. So Curvazar did exactly what we wanted to do. But now I'm just gonna right click, make this a component, and we'll just call this metal panel. And then I'm just gonna move this back down and just align it with my roof corner. And you can hang this off a little bit. It's not gonna matter too much because we're gonna add the edge cap in here. But what that's done is that's given us our metal panel piece. Well now, I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode and make a copy. And this first one, we're just gonna make a copy manually. So I'm just gonna make a copy over here. And what I wanna do is I wanna align this panel the way that it's supposed to work in real life. So I'm gonna move this over so I'm gonna move this over on the green axis until it aligns. Then move it up so that it seats properly on this other metal panel. So right there ought to work just fine. We don't have to be perfect with this um, unless you're like creating some kind of construction model or construction detail model. It really doesn't matter all that much. But what I've done here is I've just aligned this metal panel. Well now all I have to do is I just need to make copies of this all the way along this face. And so in real life, what you would do is you would have each one of these seated like this. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this one and this one, use the move tool in copy mode, and I'm just gonna copy this across, and move my mouse until this piece is where it should be. So until these two panels seat on top of each other like this, and then I'm just gonna type in times and we'll say five for right now. So five wasn't quite enough, so I'll type in times six, times seven. So what that does is that allows me to create an array of metal panels along here. I'm gonna delete off this extra piece. And then if you want to, you can remove out your extra metal. So the way that I would do that, because these are all components, is I would right click and make this one unique. Then I would just go through and find this cutoff point for where this metal panel would need to be cut. And notice I'm just creating a copy of this hidden geometry piece, and I'm gonna unsoften it. I'm gonna create another copy straight down. Then I'm gonna draw a line between the two. So basically what I'm doing is I'm splitting this metal panel with lines. And then everything on this side, you could actually just push pull it down right here, and it would erase out your extra. All right, so now that we've cleaned this up, what we wanna do is we wanna make a copy of all this. So I wanna take all of these components. It's probably faster to just select them in the outliner. I'm gonna select them all. I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode to make a copy. So I'm just gonna scale them to negative one, and then move them back. All right, so now what we're gonna do is just do the same thing with our roof cap and also our gutters. So we're just gonna go through it and we're gonna resize these CAD files. So I'm just gonna double click in here. Um, I am going to measure from this point to this point. And make sure you save before you do this, by the way. But I'm gonna resize from here to here. And I'm gonna say that this roof cap is gonna be one of their five inch roof caps rather than their 10. So I'm just gonna resize that to five. So what that does is that gives me this roof cap profile. I'm just gonna triple click on it and I'm gonna do a control C and a control V. And we're just gonna move it up over the top. And I'm not gonna worry too much about this. I just want a cap that sits over the top to make this look a little bit more realistic. So we're just gonna take this, we're gonna rotate it so that it's standing up. 
So if you need to get more detailed with this, you can, but like I said, I'm not really super worried about it right now. Um, move this down a little bit, and then we're just gonna extrude it the length of our roof. And notice how it only extruded one side, so I'm just going to, with the push-pull tool active, maybe, I'm gonna double click on this face in order to repeat that same operation. Then I'm just gonna triple click and I'm gonna make this a group. We can adjust the color in a minute. And I'm just gonna give it a slight rotational factor here. Um, probably what happened is my array wasn't straight on, so I'm just gonna rotate this up just a little bit. And again, all I really want is that cap just to sit on here to kind of block everything off. We're not worried about getting super realistic, otherwise we'd be creating more of a detail model. But I'm just gonna take this, maybe extrude it a little bit further this way. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the gutters. And I'm gonna speed this up because this video is getting really long and I think you understand what I'm trying to do. Then we can apply some colors to it and we'll have this actual detailed model in here. One thing you might wanna pay attention to and we can do a video on in the future if you're worried about it, is if you're gonna render this out, you might wanna add some detail along the underside here um, because that's where a lot of renderings I've seen kind of fall apart is they just have this like big ugly block on the face and that's not really how roofs are created. But I'm gonna add the gutter and then we'll come back and take a look at our final result. All right, so now we can take this whole assembly, delete out my default model. We can select them all. We just drop them in a group like this. And then we can apply a color to it. So whatever we want that color to be, whether it's a red, whether it's a blue, we can apply that to this whole assembly. And so what that's done is that's given us a much more detailed roof assembly. So this is gonna render better, this is gonna look better in general, um, and uh, it's just given us a little bit more detail. So if you wanna use manufacturer details in order to create something like this, it's actually really easy to do with these tools. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought was this helpful to you. Have you modeled out something that is this level of detail before? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here remember to click that subscribe button for new sketchup content every week as always thank you so much for taking the time to watch this i really appreciate it and i will catch you in the next video thanks guys